Ariel Helwani post-fight at Strikeforce in Dallas alongside the Strikeforce heavyweight champion Alistair Overeem. And Alistair, congratulations on the win over Verdum. Uh, yeah, interesting fight. Uh, some fans, uh, as you can imagine, a little disappointed. What did you think of your performance? Well, um, I came here to, uh, to knock him out. I trained hard for this fight, four months uh, training camp. Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed I couldn't deliver on my promise to the fans. And um, I apologize for that. But um, you need to the tango. And uh, looking back at the fight, looking back at the takedown attempts, uh, the total takedowns attempts attempted on me, I can only come to the conclusion, conclusion that uh, Fabricio didn't want to fight in the stand-up with me at all. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit stalling the fight on the ground. And um, yeah, I got the win, but I'm not entirely uh, satisfied. What's going through your mind when he's, you know, on his back and he's he's telling you, please, please come to the ground with me? And obviously, you know, you have pride and you want to deliver for the fans, but you obviously want to fight a smart fight. Here's Mr. Coker telling you. Back at the hotel. Okay. Scott's uh, intruding on our interview here. But what's going through your mind when that's happening? Because you, you want to deliver for the fans, but you also don't want to go into his trap. So how do you stop yourself from going into that trap? Well, uh, first of all, no, by, by not getting too emotional. Uh, of course, when somebody's challenging you, you, you want to respond to that challenge, especially when there's a lot of uh, fans watching. But on the other hand, I mean, come on, uh, you're the one lying down all the time. So I think I'm not fa satisfied about my performance, but because I couldn't deliver on the on the knockout. But I think he should be a little bit ashamed of, of his performance by not delivering to the fans at all what they paid uh, their ticket for. Do you think, um, you know, maybe because he sort of quote-unquote tricked the Fedor to go to the ground with him in their first fight, he pulled guard, that he, this sort of got to his head in a sense that he thought he could do the same thing to you and he kept going back to that because even on his feet, he looked, you know, he looked comfortable, you know, he was engaging, but then he kept going back to the ground. So do you think that he thought, based on what he did to Fedor, that he could do the same to you and that kind of ruined the fight in a sense? Well, uh, I have the idea that he did engage in the stand-up fight, but not to knock me out at all. It was all uh, based to set up a takedown. And then, um, yeah, as soon as that didn't work, he, uh, he kept stalling the fight. On the feet, um, he, a couple times it looks like he, he landed some shots. Did he ever hurt you at any point? He didn't hurt me, but uh, of course the small gloves and uh, yeah, some connected a little bit, but he didn't hurt me. Uh, that's what I mean by he was throwing strikes, but not with the intention to knock me out. He was throwing strikes to attempt to get me off base and again, then get a takedown. It's a different kind of strikes. Scott Coker told us that he thought cage rust was a factor that maybe cardio played into or lack of cardio played into your performance. How did you feel out there? Well, he kept going for the takedown. It um, frustrated me a little bit. Um, I think my cardio was, uh, was not that bad, um, but it was also not. I, ju I just wanted to be able to finish the fight. We talked um, earlier this week about the rankings and, and the way people view you. This was uh, really your first heavyweight that you fought in MMA. Uh, who's in the top ten? Do you think that you proved the point that you are a top five heavyweight now after this one? Well, I'm going to let that uh, up to you guys and the other fans. You start thinking about Bigfoot yet, or you, you're still focused on this one? Well, Bigfoot is the next one. Um, we're going to start training for him in a couple of weeks. But for now, it's uh, time for a holiday. When do you think that fight will happen? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think probably October or something. When would you like for it to happen? Uh, I think October is good. Yeah, that's good and, and, and for him, because he said, you know, he wasn't all that impressed with your performance and he promised that he's going to win the tournament and all that. He's probably the strongest guy that you've ever fought in MMA, the biggest guy. I mean, this guy has to cut weight to make 265. He's massive, good on his feet, good on the ground. Do you think you need to do something different in training? Because now it's a, it's a drastically different opponent than the one you fought in Verdun. Yeah, we're going to definitely step up, uh, step up the game. Uh, we're going to switch some things up, but uh, I'm going to be ready. Is Alistair Overeem still the favorite of this tournament? Uh, you should ask that to the fans. I was just wondering what you thought. Well... I think I'm one of the favorites, definitely. Did you see Barnett's fight? Yeah, I did. What do you think of his performance? Well, I already thought he would win. He has a lot of um, experience, a lot more than Brett. Um, he's also a clever fighter. Um, yeah, also it's 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 a uh, difference in styles. I mean, Brett is a is a hard hitter. He wants to, to bring it in the stand up, and then um, yeah, uh, what's his name? Brett Rogers? No, um, Josh. Josh oh. Burnett is clever enough not to get into that game and just take him to the ground. Um, yeah, he did good. He did good.
And finally, your brother uh, suffered a tough loss tonight. Um, uh, Chad Griggs is an interesting guy. I mean, he's kind of just a brawler. What did you think of that fight? Or did you even see it? Because I know you were preparing for your fight. I saw the fight, and um, yeah, it was a bad fight, I can tell you. It was a very bad fight. What do you think happened? I don't know, actually. I cannot give you, uh, give you an answer on that. We'll leave it at that because we can announce that Alistair Overeem is going to join us in studio on Monday's episode of the MMA Hour. His first time visiting the studio since his famous birthday bash last year. And, and who knows, maybe even an iPad. iPad well, 2. Right. Because one is... Two yeah. iPads or the iPad 2? iPad 2. Wow. If I bring the balloon and the hat, will you wear it? Of course. Even though it's on your birthday? Of course I'm going to wear it. You know that. Can't wait. See you on Monday. I have no uh, ego problems. See you on Monday, Alistair.